video as a means of reaching out to everyone during this unique and difficult crisis that we're facing because of the coronavirus. For those of you listening who don't know me, my name is Tim Case and I'm the lead pastor at Covenant Light Church. It's with great sadness that we are forced to cancel all church activities and meetings for the next few weeks and so all of our services will be online we hope to be able to live stream our sermons. We're working on that this week, and we will be letting you know how to get to that. If not, uh, there are recorded messages. They will be recorded. I will still be preaching every Sunday, and there are recorded messages from last week and the week before that we encourage you to read, to listen to. Um, we're taking these steps to comply with the federal and state government's requests to avoid any gatherings of more than 50 people in order to try and stop the spread of the coronavirus. While we have great hope that things will return to normal relatively soon, the next few weeks or possibly even months will be very challenging and stressful for most people. We want to assure you that during this difficult time, we will do everything possible to help and support everyone as we go through this. Our church offices will continue to be open at least part-time, and one of the pastors or elders will be available by phone and email to address any needs you have. Um, if you call the church phone and we're not here, there are two numbers given that you can call Pastor Dave or myself and let us know that you're in need. Uh, please continue to send us your prayer requests. Let us know what's going on, what needs you have, and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you in any way. Our hearts as those who are responsible to shepherd this church are to strengthen and encourage all of you as we face this difficulty. We love you and we care for you and we're available to you in every way we can be. In the midst of everything that's happening, I have a couple of things in my heart to share that I hope will help everyone during this time. The first thing I wanna say is that we all need to find the balance between faith on the one hand and the logic, reason, common sense, and wisdom God has given us on the other hand. Having faith and trust in God doesn't mean we ignore common sense and disregard danger. The scriptures clearly teach us to never tempt God by unnecessarily putting ourselves in danger. Wherever we can avoid taking unnecessary risks, we should. On the other hand, God tells us to walk in faith, to trust him, and to commit ourselves into his hands. Therefore, when we do need to be in a dangerous situation, in order to help others, we don't walk in fear. Fear or worry about the coronavirus shouldn't stop us from caring for others. The key is to ask God for wisdom to know when not to take a risk and when to take a risk and to trust God to protect you. We can trust God during this situation and therefore we can't allow worry and fear to fill our hearts. More than anything else, fear will keep us from walking in the ways that God wants us to. It will, it will pull us down. It will discourage us. It will, it will tear us down. Please go to God and give him your fear. Don't worry. In saying that, we also need to plan ahead. We need to think about tomorrow. We need to think about what groceries we're going to need. We need to think about what supplies we need. But we're also not supposed to worry about tomorrow. In Matthew 6, 34, Jesus said, Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. He didn't say don't think about tomorrow. He said don't be anxious about tomorrow. So the key is to think about the needs of tomorrow and the next day as long as you're not worrying or anxious about it. When you're thinking about it and you feel yourself starting to get anxious or worried or fearful, that's the time to stop thinking and the time to start praying. Prayer is the key to bringing it to God and not allowing fear, worry, anxiety to fill your heart. Um, thirdly, and this is a personal request, please don't try to explain if this virus is God's hand or God's judgment. Just tell people that there's hope in Christ and that God is offering salvation to everyone who will turn to him. It's not our place to evaluate disastrous events and then interpret them as the hand of God or not. Let God speak for himself. 
He told us to go and make disciples of all nations by sharing the gospel of salvation. And that's what I want us to do. This is an opportunity for us to tell people God is offering us his love, his grace, his salvation. He wants us to tell people about Jesus, about his death on the cross and his resurrection. Not about his judgment. We can mention there's judgment if you don't come to Christ, but that's not the point. The point is to come to Christ. So what do we feel God is saying to us at this time? Well, there's three things I want us to to think about. One, please remember that God loves us. He is on our side. He has not forsaken us, abandoned us. He didn't go anywhere. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? We could read that, What then shall we say to this virus? If God is for us, who can be against us? So we need to remember that God loves us and that by all means he is for us, no matter what we face. This is also a time to seek God and draw near to him like we never have. Um, We have more time now because we have to stay away from all the things that we normally do. Uh, Many people are not working. Many people are home. Children are home. Schools are closed. Now is the time to seek God. Very often during hardships and trouble. People either get mad at God and accuse him of being unloving or people draw near to God and they find refuge in him. They find peace in him. And this is a time for us to find our refuge in God, to draw near to him, not to pull away from him, not to be angry at him, but to trust him. Secondly, God wants us to be at peace. As I said, he doesn't want us to have fear, worry, anxiety. One of the keys to peace, besides praying, is what Jesus talked about, what Paul wrote about, about being content. In Philippians 4, 11 to 13, Paul wrote, Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. And he wrote, I know how to be brought low and how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance, and need. The key to being at peace is praying and being content and thankful for what God has given you. So if you don't have enough toilet paper, if you don't have enough bread, if you're worried, go to God and be content and thankful for what you do have and trust him and find peace. The second part of Hebrews 13, 5 says, be content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So being content is based on knowing that he won't leave us and forsake us. And being content and being thankful is what brings peace to our hearts. And thirdly, and this is very important, this is a time to remember those in need. Jesus said in Matthew 7, Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Please reach out to those around you, especially your neighbors, and help them in every way you can. Show the love of Christ. If that means buying groceries for someone, buy groceries. If it means cleaning someone's house because they're too sick or too elderly to care for themselves, then trust God and bless others and care for their needs. I know people are saying, you might get sick, you're spreading it. If someone can't buy food if they're sick, if they need us. We need to reach out and commit ourselves to God and trust him and reach out and meet people's needs. This is the time that we should. A crisis does not change who we are. It reveals it. We don't change in the hard times. We don't change when the times are difficult and we don't change when things are dangerous. The mark of all true believers is endurance in hardship and perseverance in trials because of our trust in God and our full confidence in his love for us. This is a time for the church of Christ to stand tall with hearts full of hope and hands ready to help and serve others. Christians everywhere should be showing the world that that we don't fear because God is with us and we trust him and that we care for others and we love them. 
This is very important. This is a time for the church to reach out with both the gospel and the practical love of Christ. People are afraid. People are scared. People are worried. They think it might be the end of the world, that it might change everything permanently, the economy, all of it. If they needed God ever, it's now. And this is a time people are more open to hearing God has a plan. He's in control. So please take opportunity of this. And lastly, and this is something I don't easily share, um, even though we're not having services for the next few weeks, the church still has bills to pay. We still have to pay for electricity and heat and, and water. And so I'm asking everyone that would normally give, the members of this church, who would bring their tithes and offerings to the church, that you would not forget to give those either through our website or by your cell phone, online, but to please continue to give because we still have bills to pay and we need you to give. Um, just like you still have bills to pay, so do we. So I'm encouraging everyone to remember to bring your tithes and offerings electronically to the church. May God bless you all. May God keep you. And most of all, may you find your refuge, your peace in God during this difficult time. We will be connecting more, hopefully a couple of times a week, sending out many messages, podcasts, emails, uh, MailChimp, everything to hopefully encourage each other. We're a family. We need to strengthen each other, encourage each other. We need to pray for each other. We need to care for each other's needs. Call each other. We, we have time at home. Just talk on the phone, text, email, social media. Just make sure that we're spending time with each other through a distance, but nonetheless time with each other. Care for each other. When we're separated physically, that doesn't mean we have to be separated and alone. Reach out, love, care, and have hope and trust in God. He is with us. He is for us, and we will get through this. God bless you. Have a good night.